there are several unanswered questions in the world religious denominations claiming that there is less information in the holy scripture to tell exactly who michael the archangel is is he the christ there are several locations that we can equate michael the archangel with christ also in contrary we can equate michael the archangel with christ some feel that michael is jesus christ appearing in a temporary form before incarnate into this world such as christ did the role in the old testament as the angel of the lord there may be also different views of the people there are different views of many religious denominations watch to and tract society the jehovah witnesses they believe that christ is a created being and some tells that michael the archangel is christ and some tells he is just an angel but christ there may be views about michael that totally incompatible with what the bible says about christ in some occasions it's compatible fact 1 assumptions for michael being the christ the arguments for michael's identification as being the pre-incarnate christ are as follows according to the holy scripture michael is the chief prince and protector which means the defender Michael is called the chief prince of God's people. He is also called the protector of the people Israel. The Holy Scripture reveals that the Lord is the one who protects Israel. In Psalm chapter 121 verses 2 through 4 in the scripture it tells my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps israel will neither slumber nor sleep then the argument goes like this if the lord protects israel and michael is the one who is called the protector of the people israel then michael can be the lord who is protecting the people israel fact two the second coming of Christ the Holy Scripture says that when Christ returns he will come with a cry of command and with the voice of the Archangel first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the Archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first since Christ comes with the voice of the Archangel, the argument goes that he must be that Archangel. The only Archangel revealed in the scripture is Michael. The two Apostles John and Paul give a good example of how two texts can be described the same event but in slightly different ways. Paul says dead believers are resurrected at the voice of the archangel for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and john records that the lord jesus said the dead writers would be resurrected at the sound of his own voice i tell you the truth a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live and he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned John chapter 5 verses 25 through 29 these parallel passages are speaking of the same event Apostle Paul in Thessalonians calls it the voice of the Archangel and John in his gospel calls it the voice of the Son of God 
When Christ returns to call his faithful ones to life, every angel in heaven will come with him. The Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the angels with him. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31. He is their commander. There is no mystery here. Fact 3. Michael as one of the main rulers. In Daniel chapter 10 verses 13, the fact that Michael is called one of the chief princes is likely to seem that he is only one being of the other chief princes. The scripture says, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. The word chief signifies main or head leader or a commander. The prince signifies as ruler. God sent the angel Gabriel to give a special message to the prophet Daniel. Daniel chapter 8 verses 16 and Daniel chapter 9 verses 21 give the ideas about few more information. This angel messenger told Daniel that Michael is the great prince who protects your people. A prince is the son of a king, of course, and Jesus is the son of God, the king of heaven. Gabriel in the very same book calls the Messiah the prince. Daniel chapter 9 verses 25. Messiah is called as the prince. Michael is also called as the great prince. If this is true and two things equal to the same thing are equal to each other, this means the Messiah and Michael are one and the same person, Jesus Christ. In addition, Angel Gabriel says to Daniel, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth and there is none that holdeth me in these things but Michael your prince. So according to this verse, Angel Gabriel directly and harshly tells Daniel that there is none that helps him with the evil distractions except Michael. So Gabriel couldn't mistaken his words forgetting the Lord. He doesn't tell Daniel about the Lord. He tells about Michael only. He harshly used the words, there is none without Michael. The angel Gabriel is an important role in the scripture that worked to the Lord by very near. In the Old Testament, when the three unknown persons came to meet Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to through 1 through 2. Out of that unknown persons, one was Gabriel and one was the Lord himself in the appearance of an angel. The scripture says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. In addition, Jesus is never revealed as one of the chief princes in the scripture, but he has been called as the Prince of Israel, Messiah the Prince, and the Prince of Peace. On contrary, he is also called the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, the Kings of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The scripture says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He said in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 30, I and my Father are one, and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Revelation chapter 19 verses 16. In the other hand, 
The Lord is the one who gives orders to Gabriel, none others except the Lord. In the book of Daniel, he tells that someone in the appearance of a man held his voice saying, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision, which meant the person with the appearance of a man told Gabriel to make Daniel understand the vision. Fact 4. The one who is like God. The word Michael derives from the Hebrew word Mikael, derived from the question Mikael, meaning who is like God, literally who is like El. And Christ was also called as Emmanuel. The scripture says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. The, in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 23. In addition, the word angel, the word archangel is derived from the Greek as arch plus angel, literally as the chief messenger. Chief means head or the commander and the word angel means messenger. Fact 5. The conflict of Michael and Satan. It's look like there is a further confusion with the identification of Jesus with Michael. The book of Jude says, but when the archangel Michael contended with the devil and disputed about the body of Moses, he did not dare to bring a condemnation of slander against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Jude chapter 1 verses 9 But also it may be Michael told Lord as God the Father, because the final judgment in the end is only given by the Father himself. To prove it, the best example we can take is when Jude chapter 1 through 9 compared with the book of Zechariah chapter 3 verse 2 where Jesus again is confronting Satan. The Lord himself said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 2 This verse is a perfect parallel to Jude chapter 1 through 9 almost a carbon copy, except the names are changed. In the book of Jude, he is called Michael, and in the book of Zechariah, he is called uh, the Lord. In both occasions, Christ knew it was pointless to err argue with Lucifer's closed mind. Lucifer had made his mind up long ago. Jesus knew that a day is coming when as Lord and Judge of all the universe, he will rebuke Satan with finality, condemning him to, to lake of fire. In the time when serpent the Satan tempted Jesus Christ, Satan said Jesus, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. But Jesus replied as, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus didn't tell Satan as, Thou shalt worship me. Matthew chapter 4 verses 10 At this point, we can conclude that Jesus mentioned as Lord thy God about God the Father. The next point is, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus Christ says, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. From this thing also, we can conclude that the final decision of the judgment is given by God the Father. Fact 6. 
Michael's name bears the likeness of God. Michael means who is like God. The answer of course is no one. The closer one gets to God, as a son gets to his father, neither one being nor any of his angels is like God except father and the son in the co-eternal deity. Fact 7. The appropriated names bearing L the Lord. When Jesus was born in human flesh through the Virgin Mary, the prophetic utterances of the Holy Spirit gave him many appropriate names. A few of these are Emmanuel, God is with us, Matthew chapter 1 verses 23, Jesus the Savior, Matthew chapter 1 verses 21, Lamb of God, John chapter 1 verses 29, Christ, Anointed One or King, John chapter 1 verses 41. The scripture also reveals that the devil's name was Lucifer before he rebelled against God. After being thrown out of heaven, Lucifer acquired a new name called Satan. In the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 and Revelation chapter 12 verses 9. Since we know Jesus existed throughout the ages of eternity long before coming as child to Bethlehem. It is logical to assume that he too had some heavenly names before his earthly ex experience. Nearly every name had a meaning. A few examples will illustrate this point. The first name, L. These letters is a name pertained to God. The second one, Elijah, my God is Yahweh. Third one, Daniel, judgment of God. The fourth one, Gabriel, which means the man of God. Fifth one, Michael, which means one who is like God. Unless our intention is to be blasphemous, we must recognize that no one is like God, except God himself. The scripture is clear that it was Lucifer's pride which prompted him to say, I will be like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 through 14. Who was Lucifer referring to? By now, we can sure that the devil understands that no created being, even a dazzling angel like Lucifer, can ever be equal to his creator. Fact 8 The Old Testament contains a story of human encounter with the heavenly commander-in-chief. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua chapter 5 verses 13 through 15 On this occasion, Joshua is being visited by the Lord Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate form. Throughout the Old Testament, the Bible mentions the Lord appearing to individuals such as Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 through 33 and Jacob in Genesis chapter 32 verses 24 
through 30. On this particular occasion, for Joshua was 13 says, that Joshua looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword. When Joshua asks who he is, Joshua is told that he is the commander of the Lord's army. The scripture says, I am the commander in chief of the Lord's army. This is just another way of saying he is the archangel or ruler of the whole angel host or the fact 9 final battle between Christ and Satan in the book of Daniel chapter 12 verses 1 it says and at the time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at this at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone shall be found written in the book of life in the book of revelation it expresses when satan went to make war in heaven the war arose in heaven and finally he was thrown out of heaven to the earth Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 through 9 says and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels forced fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Fortunately, this verse identifies the dragon as that old serpent called the devil and Satan. This leaves no question about the adversary's identity. It is interesting to note that each of the four instances where the name Michael is used in the scripture, there is a conflict between Michael and Satan going on age-old adversaries since the beginning of time.